There we go. Now we're recording. Hello, everyone. We're actually here. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. We're both a bit sort of like matchsticks this morning because yes. both of our <clears throat> both of us had animals bringing um, well, actually dead stock for me in into the house and um, chasing well playing with it under the bed uh, and then eating it so um, that was very exciting you you had a mouse and a cat i had two whippets and a rat somewhere under the floorboards and behind the spoon that that sounds like that song uh, martin mm -hmm. said to his man you know it does it does we'll have to do one that. mouse and a cat two whippets and a rat no it's it's not it's the it's the it's the man, it's the man with a bee or something. If it was going to be Martin's man, it would have to be the other way around. So I saw a rat chasing two whippets. It doesn't rhyme. No, it doesn't. No. It doesn't I mean, the, the actual words are, I saw a rat chase a cat. Yes. And that, of course, works. Yes. But I saw a rat chasing two whippets. It doesn't scan. No, it doesn't. It doesn't fit the tune at all. No. <laughs> We're not going to sing the tune now, no. I assure you. Fine, perhaps. <laughs> well, yeah. After practice, we need, uh, yeah. But at the moment, I think we're both too sort of croaky in um, early morning-ish. I know it's not early morning. Well, it's well, 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 ten past four, which is definitely oh dark hundred. Um, well, <clears throat> the first uh, critter that came in was about two, mm. and then the second one was about half past four. So you just get time to get nicely off to sleep again before you get woken. Yes. And in my case, by a 20, pound, 20 kilo whip it leaping up, up and down on the bed, going, I want it, I want it. At least I don't have that. What mm. I have is meow, 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 meow. Well, it, it, it's complicated. <laughs> Normally the dogs sleep in their crates in the lounge, which is A, warmer, and B, means I actually get a nice sleep. Mm. But yesterday I had to take three ducks down to our growth for their new home. And I don't drive a car with two whippets on the back seat and two ducks, three ducks flopping around the place. So they had to go in Whippet, Wicket's dog crate in the boot. And the dog crate's still there. <laughs> and the dogs had to sleep in with me last night. <laughs> yeah, I wondered if you were going to use the dog crate because it seems a sort of sensible place and they're not going to get out of that. So, but, so with, we're, we're three ducks less. So the, the menagerie is changing. Only 15, yes. We're getting there. We are. we are. I think I've been left with all the clever ducks, though. Because quite a lot of them took one look at me when I went out to catch them and went, roof or rafters, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> the ones on the floor going, these things are flat, do they do something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it probably wouldn't hurt to have the clever ducks anyway, to, no. to some, yeah. some extent. So, well, um, what was the story that got us into this? Because oh, we've got a very interesting I, thing to talk about. This it time. is, and it really it's Emily. It's Emily at the base of it. Yes, because I'm trying to teach Emily how to do the Earth Sun exercise. Now, remember, it's Emily. Rabbit. Emily is a rabbit, a very small rabbit. rabbit. Yes, a rabbit who has never been incarnate before, so she's having to learn everything from scratch. Right, she's no past life experience to, to build on at all. So I was trying to explain the Earth Sun exercise to her. So I thought I'll I'll go and talk to the horses about being a four-footed animal, as opposed to a two-footed animal, and doing the earth sun exercise because they do the earth sun exercise all the time. Mm. It's almost their ground state of being. They don't do it as an exercise. It's just like we're, we're connected. Yeah, yeah. But of course, having four feet and feet front and back is a completely different feeling from standing on your hind legs. So I went out, went to the horses. What can you tell me about this? And Poppy looked at me and walked down the other end of the field. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And George turned around, gave me a great big beaming smile with his ears right forward like this and went, why don't you try it and find out? <laughs> so I was then on the floor, pretty much in the downward dog position with my bum stuck in the air, <laughs> trying to do the earth sun with my hands as well as my feet on the floor. And it, it definitely does rewire all the circuits. It does change how you work completely, it doesn't does it? How you work completely. Mm. And then, of course, I started experimenting with other different ways of doing this and thinking, well, the horses actually do it not through the crown chakra. Well, humans usually use the crown chakra, which is yeah. up here, the crown of the which head. Is, which is right, which is right. Which is, which is right. Horses tend to use their brow chakra, 
Because when you're a horse, your brow chakra is actually further forward. So in a horse, they're more in a, a horizontal line, mm. so to speak. And they tend to use what we would call the unicorn's horn. Mm. Yeah. And they do it that way. So I tried it that way, which was interesting. But of course, being a human, your brow chakra is pointing in the wrong direction. Unless you're sitting up there like this all the time. Or sitting up with your head back with a crick in your neck. Mm. But then that throws all the, all the meridians out of balance down, your, down the back of your neck. Exactly. Mm. So then I, I tried it on your suggestion. I tried it as a snake just lying on the floor, mm. which put my brow chakra completely in. You know, my, the front of it's pointing down and the back of it's sticking into my brain. <laughs> I was like, whichever way I do this, it's terribly metaphorical, but I, my thinking bits are in the way of my doing bits. <coughs> now, that is one that of the is... most important facts. Yes. For a human, our thinking bits are in the way of our doing bits. Absolutely. That's why I put that bit in. Remember that bit, people. It's important. So then I tried lying on my back and doing it, and that works for a human. Yes, it does, yeah. Of course, it doesn't work for a snake because the shape of their face means their, their brow chakra their third eye points upwards. So it's fine for them. So then I shapeshifted into a dragon and works fine for dragons. They have a few extra chakras going down the wings, but they didn't get involved. Well, actually, when we really look at humans, we've got quite a few extra chakras all we over did. the shop as well, but we're not going there today. No, we'll deal with that another time. So that was quite an interesting exercise. And then I started thinking, what happens if you did it the other way around? Because if you're, if you're going to be a human and lie face down, then your brow chakra is pointing down and your back end is pointing up. At which point there was a chorus from the horse who said, don't do that. Mm. Mm. Now at that point, I was only thinking about it. I wasn't planning on doing it. Mm. <laughs> That's a few reasons. <laughs> yes. And then last night when we were talking about what are we going to talk about today, mm. Poppy, with it in a decidedly sarcastic tone of voice, said, why don't you talk about why it's not a good idea to plug the sun into where the sun don't shine? Yes. So there we are. That's her words. So that's what we're going to talk about. Indeed. And actually, plugging the sun into, I mean, my mind is there going and I am getting some of it in a, a sort of a figure of eight, which I can see you are too. But it's like, no, because you've got a completely different sort of fire there for a start. Yes, it's a, it's a different vibration of energy. To put it into a different term of reference. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And there we really need Paul in on this because he knows all about the rays, which I don't really... Yes. But I know sun, about the rays too. You know about the rays, yes, I know, but I don't. I'm not going to expound on it for the rest of the hour and we could just sit back to our thumbs and go. Uh, yes, no, no, I won't do that. No, because no. We'll, go, we'll get off the point. We, that's true. But in esoteric thought, you, you, I'm relying on you to correct me if I'm wrong. I will. Yeah. There are various rays which connect to or correspond to various different kingdoms of animals, plants, rocks, crystals, different stages of human evolution, different everything. And the, yeah. the sun, and this is where I'm really going to put my neck out, the sun is connected to ray one. Yes, good, I'm glad I'm right that. <laughs> um, in biodynamics, that means sun energy comes down through the horns of horned animals like cows. Yes, yes. It acts differently in things like goats because their horns are made differently. And deer's antlers are different again. But deer's but, antlers are strictly speaking bone. Yes. And well, the cow's horns are made of hair. Yeah, effectively, hair. it's the it's chitin, the same stuff as makes yes. this. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we also have hair. Mm -hmm. So that's an important reason why the sun should come in through your hair just as it does through cow's horns. So that's, that's, that, was first, that was the first thing I thought of. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's, that's the beginning. I'm working on this. It's still percolating its way through my cauldron. So I'm, I'm, this is evolving between us as we go. Well, Ray 4 
is the one that hits your arse end. Right. And your base chakra. And um, where is it? I couldn't think of this. Never mind. Anyway, so ray four is a cube in the sense of a solid. Mm. And they do relate very much to, um, is it Pythagoras's solids? Quite possibly. Now you're into maths, so that's definitely not my field. Oh, right. Okay. Well, it's more yours than mine, but we won't argue about that. Anyway, it's a cube and it's very four. Um, and four is about the ground and it's about linking to the ground and being part of the ground. And that ray is channels downwards into the ground and connects you and preferably makes you not float off and be off with the fairies. Uh, I've just had an interjection from Poppy on that. Go on. Congratulations for hooves. Poppy, you beat me to it. <laughs> But thank you for saying that because it is very, it is very true. Um, if we're going to get into that malarkey, I can see some other stuff coming up because we've got two feet. And uh, two is the ray of the heart chakra. That There are seven rays and they actually relate to each of the chakras, but they don't relate nothing does except these daft modern books they don't relate in basically up and down they actually go ding 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 and they make, keep making figures of eight around the place anyway um we've got two feet and humans are very emotionally charged yes they're very much more emotionally charged than most animals the closest I think that probably comes to us is a dog. And even the dog is not like we are. Even dogs keep four feet on the ground. They do. And twice as grounded as we are. And I've chosen those words specifically. Yeah, but they, I was thinking more on the emotional stage mm. of, um, you see something on the TV, an advert or a program or something, and you probably, oh, like this you know because it, it was awful in some way um, um or particularly stirring and and beautiful and there you are in tears because it's so fabulous um now now she's not here we had kelly cat earlier she might be back um but i'm yes she is there but she's not here right um she cares about me. She adores me. She loves me. Um, uh, she, she actually nibbles me and bites me very gently, which is a, a strong thing. Mm. If I go out for the day, um, I'm very much like, where have you been? What's been going on? Um, and all the things that people don't actually think cats do, but she does. She cares a lot about me. But... It's different to the way I care about her. Mm. I mean, if I lost her, or when I lose her, because she will almost certainly die before I do, um, I shall be heartbroken. Mm. Now, I've had, I usually have two cats at once and sometimes three, um, but now I've just got the one. Now, when um, Isabel died, my little is older, and Ollie knew she was going and they were like sisters and they, they fought like sisters sometimes too, but they did, they weren't. And so she had to go to the vet to go. Um, and I brought her back because we always deal with them at home. So I showed her to Ollie and Ollie looked and went, okay, right. And went off, I went out. And she'd done all of her goodbyes and everything um long before she did miss izzy um and she used me in the way that she used to use izzy but i mean i was heartbroken because mm. izzy was my familiar um but i knew she was going to go so you know we got there and ollie wasn't heartbroken as i was it was a very different emotional thing Yes. And I've had horses too and dogs and I've even had rabbits long, long ago. 
<laughs> and um, they grieve, but they do it differently. Very differently. And it's part of the fact that, I mean, Fiona and I do totally know in reincarnation. Um, mm -hmm. We know we've been here before. We know we're going to be here again. Um, so when we, when our bodies crash out and give up, we know that's not the end, you know, the end um, in big letters for us. Most people don't. Mm. And even when they start into this sort of work, it takes time for you to be able to convince yourself you're not making it up. Yes. And for me, learning that in this life, animals have been a huge part of that. Yeah. Because I have had several of my animal friends have come back mm. to their following lives. And yeah. our friends have crossed again. Yeah. 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 I have... Just with Emily, I've got Konyan here. Konyan was with me 11 years. Yeah. And then he came back briefly as bunking to hold space for Emily to move in. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's two lives he shared with me. Mm. And um, I've had, well, I've had both male and female cats. Mm. Um, mostly the familiars have been female cats, but not all. And now Kellen, it, she isn't quite Izzy, but she is. Yes. And Izzy wasn't quite Goldie, but she it was. And so now I've sort of like got an accumulation. Yes. And Konyan is totally different from Bunkin. It's the same soul. Yeah. It's a different personality in a different body. Yeah. George and I have crossed paths in a past life. Yes, indeed you have, yeah. And yeah. he was a barbarian then too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're not going into that today. <laughs> and I mean, you have with Abe as well. Yes. Um, a totally different character. Absolutely. Um, and, um, you know, I had with, with my big um, black Alsatian, German yes. Shepherd, um, and I had him, he came twice because he came first with my dad when I was very little and I grew up with him. And then later, um, my first husband brought him home as a little whop about yay big. And he was with us again. Yes. Um, and they weren't the same, but there was this like accumulation. Yes. Now, get back to the point. Um, they they know this in their bones much better than even you and I do. Yes. And, and we're, yeah. relatively speaking, quite good. Little Emily doesn't. Because she's not actually experienced it. She hasn't. This is all new to her. Yeah. And as far as she's concerned, like most people, which is going to be really interesting bringing this out, mm. um, is this could be the end. I stop breathing, it's the end. Yes. And um, you know how it is. I mean, we all know how it is. You can tell someone, well, it isn't. And they go, hmm. They may go, yes, yes, and look nice and uh, approving of you. And inside they're going, hmm, not sure about that. And even, even when you know it intellectually, I mean, if you've been brought up in a Buddhist tradition, for example, yeah. you would accept intellectually, absolutely, there's a course reincarnation. Yeah. But you may not actually know it and no. believe it. And part of the things with like um, past life regressions, mm. when they're done really well, um, not going there, um, when they're done really well, um, is you get to relive it or just a little bit of it briefly in such an extent that you absolutely know you were there. Mm. And probably, and this has been, must be for a lot of people, we are getting back to why you don't plug it in where the sun don't shine, well, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, most people have been to somewhere, you know, you're on holiday and you go somewhere and you go, oh, I know this place. Oh. Do you remember the first time I went down to Exmoor? And I was looking at things and going, I've been here before. I've never been to Exmoor before. How can I remember the slope of that hillside? Yeah, yeah. 
And in the course of those, that week or so that I spent with you on Exmoor, mm -hmm. I actually recovered part of a past life. Mm. I, I wasn't, you know, Catherine the Great on tour or anything. I'd been a pack mule. Yes. And this is the way past lives work. You very rarely, I mean, somebody must be Catherine the Great reborn, but it certainly isn't me. Mm. Well, if, if it was either of us, we can't remember it, so that's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have actually walked the walls of Exmoor as a pack mule yeah. many hundreds of years ago. And I remember when she did this too, because it's in one of my favourite places. We're coming down to what I call the, the dancing glades, which are yeah. these lovely little, um, tiny little water meadows by a stream with beautiful trees over them. And they, they've got to have, you know, the Greek forms and satyrs dancing in them. In fact, they have. Um, anyway, it's like this, the road down. And we got to about the, come around here and got to about here and she stops. And I go, yes. And then I'm a pack mule. So there's a path down here. Now she'd never been down there before. I've never been, I've never been down that road or up it or And anywhere. now, because it's cars, it's like this because that is just about feasible for a car. Mm. And I, I mean just about. Because the road itself came down and it actually went straight down. Which you can do if you're a pack horse or a pack mule. And there is still a path there. Yes. And I, I knew there was. When I walked down, it felt familiar. Absolutely. I almost felt like I had hooves again. Yeah. Yeah. Which was quite an odd feeling. Yeah. And I didn't tell her that it was there. So I said, yeah, okay, where do you want to go? And so she, she just set off because she's fine like that. Mm. And I just followed on and I was there going like this behind. <laughs> because I knew the path was there and I knew yes. that she didn't know. It's not actually on the map. It's not. And it's it's not obvious from the road. It's behind no, again. No, no. But it's it's overgrown. The cobbles are still there, but there's a lot of grass over them. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we've all had this kind of experience. So, but we get told, "Oh, you're just imagining it. You've read about it, you know, and some other shit." Because most people are scared of that kind of thing, yeah. and you know, you can't be different, and they can't bear it if you're different, and all the rest of that kind of shit. So. We have this ability to know, but we don't know it as well as the animals do because we don't live that way. Most people live in some form of um, built up community, even if it's only a village, mm -hmm. um, but it's not like really out and in touch with the wild. Um, and a, a large part of it is also that our thinking bits are getting away about doing this. Indeed. And this is why. Yeah. Because of where we live and because we've been brought up. I mean, you must all have seen at least adverts for these programmers, sort of like Ferocious Planet or something. Yes. And um, it drives me mad. As though, excuse me, as though the planet has got it in for you and it's just like, Whoa, get them now, Whoa, get them now. <laughs> hunting people down yes yeah it, it's it's absolute bollocks but um anyway um they don't and they sort of stare at us because we don't know this but we're so out of touch we we don't we're learning a lot of different things because we're very connected through the heart chakra um now the heart chakra is actually not where your soul resides but we won't go into that too far now. Um, but it, it is where your emotional self resides. And um, you, it will really sort of overpower all of the rest of your bits. So it's not actually just your thinking bits that get in the way. Your emotional bits get in the way too. It, indeed, they do. Because, and this is partly um, Age of Enlightenment stuff as well. Mm -hmm. We've got, you know, there's thinking and there's feeling and they're different. Um, they are. Yes. yes. And you need to learn the difference of them in this sort of work. Um, but things are much more melded than, than we like to think. Yes. So there will be thinky bits in your feelings and there will be feely bits in your thinkings. Yes. But 
we're so encouraged that it you know you've you've got to know the answer you've got to get it right you've got to do this and you've got to be a perfect employee <laughs> and, all, and all the rest of it quite a large part of that is is you know your math teacher going you haven't shown me you're working out yes exactly just knowing the answer isn't good enough no but and it, it isn't for that for the kind of work that's involved in that but it's it's not true for the whole of life and it's not true for every other species. They sort of go, why do you want to be bothered with that? I'm much more interested in eating this tree. Yes. But it does mean that we do open ourselves up to problems like what happens if I connect where the sun to where the sun don't shine? It does. Because we will, well, apart from anything else, we have these two very different energies. I mean, you probably a lot of you have done the Earth's sun. And so you've got earth fire and you know what that feels like when you go down there and you've got sun fire and you know what that feels like when you go up there. But of course, in the middle of those is the bit that you start from is your heart. Yes. And so let's just do that for a minute. So there you are in your heart and you go down and we're just going to do it very, very quickly. And there you are. And there is this lovely place with the earth, the heart of the earth, and the earth spark, and the earth fire. Just feel that for a minute. Now, back we come, because we're not going to do this big thing. So, back we come, and we go through the heart. And because we've been down to the, the earth fire, you'll feel a slight difference in your heart this time. Okay, just notice that. And then up we go, and whizzing off across space, well past the speed of light, and into the sun and there's the sun fire and that's amazing too and but so different from the earth fire with different feel different smell different sense different everything about it so just feel that and feel the sun there and then back we come to your heart now we're going to stop there mm. now feel those two energies and it's like this weaving in your heart in a figure of eight yeah, or maybe like that. That's fine yes. too. And they're very different and they reflect the energy of your, well, no, it's not right. They affect, not reflect, yes. the energy of your heart, which is part of the point of the exercise. Indeed. And now, okay. Uh, Kellen's just telling me to do this and it will be safe. Um, yes, Poppy seems to think so too. Um, right, so in here, now imagine, try and imagine that, you know, here's all this little ball of energy of your heart. It's out here in front of you, okay? It's not actually inside. And there's the Earth's energy coming up and going around and the sun energy coming down and going around. And you're, it's all affecting your energy, which is in the middle. Now, do this. Ow. Yes. <laughs> a, it doesn't want to do that. It no. resists quite strongly. I mean, no, it's pulling me mm. backwards. Yes. Um, and B, it's like... Uh, well, it, yes, complete ungrounding. Yeah. 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 And not only that, it puts such fire into me. Mm. It sort of blew me off. Yes. And um, the sun is so powerful, it felt as though it was like blowing me away. Yes. Now, there is one other thing that comes in off that. Now, hopefully you, you all got that. And anyway, this is recorded. So if you want to go and try it again, you can try it again with us. So yeah. you'll be able to. But do think about, and try it because it makes a difference when you actually do the wobbles yourself. Do it, make sure you do it out in front of you and not inside. Yes. Don't try and do it inside. You'll probably be sick. Yeah. Um, and if you're using the computer and you're sick all over it, that'll balls that up. Um, but anyway, practicality is a part. Now, where was I? Another exercise that Poppy and Kellen were working with. Mm, no, we just did that one. So, okay. right. Um, I've got lost. Maha, help, somebody bring me back. Um, right, we've got these, right, yes, blowing it off, right. 
Okay, well, we were just talking about reincarnation and about leaving and coming back and this sort of thing. Now, I think um, I've certainly been with people when they're actually dying. You know, not after they're dead and not on the way up to it, but they actually do the dying thing in front of me. In fact, my most dramatic one was this lovely guy who was in a um, great lecture at the Theosophical Society in London. And there's this lovely Indian guy, very, very warm and bright and intelligent and wonderful. And um, another friend of mine was giving the lecture up front. And the Indian guy was sitting just this side of me. And he sort of looked at me and he went, like this, and he killed over and he landed it with his head in my lap. Gone. And gone. yeah, he was gone. Well, not quite gone. Um, because um we got it, we we you know, there's total stop, obviously, and actually see theosophists are quite intelligent despite being a bit weird at times. Um, and so we, we picked him up very carefully and we laid him out flat on the floor. And um he was still just about there and he went <gasps> and he was gone and several of us saw him leave uh, lots of people leave from the heart he didn't he left from the brow but i said he was he was all there he was fully connected and he'd actually pulled the cord yes he had actually known it was his time so he'd gone right here we go Boop. Now, that will help you pull the cord. Yes. <laughs> because you're actually pulling your earth grounding out and you're firing with the sun. Yes. So you're doing your rocket propulsion job. So don't do it inside your own heart. No. <laughs> and you can now see completely why the co all the horses, horses went, no! <laughs> Indeed. Where's our hay going to be if she goes? <laughs> when Bunkin died, he died. I, I'd sat up with him all night because he wasn't feeling well. And he wanted just to be on my knee. Yes. So he was actually with me for 12 hours, mm. just on my knee, getting slowly weaker. And then quite suddenly, at half past seven, he, he gave me a shove with his nose, rolled over, went, <gasps> and that was it. Gone. And that was, I'm off, goodbye, book, checked out. Yeah. yeah. I've had that done with the cats as well. Mm -hmm. I also had it done with another human being, yes. um, which was, it's just amazing. Yes. And I found it was one of the, because, you know, I get depressed and I start thinking that I, I just spend my life talking bollocks and none of it's real anyway, and it's all awful anyway. Uh, and I'm sure we all have depression like that every now and then. <laughs> And uh, good afternoon. Sorry, sorry about that. The dog uh, was straightening up. <laughs> it's all right. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we better sort of whip it out. So I found being with both of those people when they actually died and watching them go, because they were the sort of people who could who could literally do that yes. quite willingly, quite knowingly, and knowing what they were doing. Um, so reassuring. Mm. So, well, I'm the sort of person who thinks, well, if they can do that, I can do that. Yes. And if, well, if we're not careful, this is going to take us into a discussion of the cauldrons. Which could not, well be what we talk about next time. I'm not sure we want to do it this time, though. No, I don't think we do. Um, but if we, if we do get into talking about the cauldrons next time, mm. um, it will actually lead us into... Um, one or two of the more advanced protection exercises that I think are about to be up any moment. And um, because we, we've done, Fiona's put all these together and it's great, but one or two of them, we were sort of like, I'm not sure we have to give them that one yet because it's asking. Well, there's, there's a, a bit lot. of groundwork needs doing first. Yeah. And um, a discussion on the cauldrons will probably help the groundwork enormously, yeah. um, along with other things, but still. But no. This, I found it so reassuring that people can do this and people that I respected did it. Um, and I thought, oh, okay. 
And of course, I do, yes, I do remember doing it myself. And I, I have had past lives where I've, I've left intentionally. And I just hope I've got the gumption to do it this time because it's about the most convenient way of going. Um, but, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what I planned for myself this time. So it could be anything. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't hurt at the time. <laughs> That's another subject we should bring in another, another time. Uh, yes, it is. How we actually structure our lives before we're born. Definitely. Which most people forget. And that is that, that will actually lead us nicely into the cauldrons. Yes. So we're, we're doing a little bit of planning here, chaps, um, and see what we can do about it. Because it is, it is important um, when you get in this work, don't be la 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 la. I mean, the go with the flow is good, and I approve of go with the flow, but I don't approve of going with the flow with your eyes shut and your and your mind off on some bloody fantasy. Yes, there's a big difference. Or to to put it a slightly slightly different way, it's a good thing to have an open mind. Yeah, but not so open your brains fall out. <laughs> You do actually need your brains and you, you do, do actually we need your thinking stuff. You. <laughs> we may have to struggle a little to get everything in the proper balance, not too much head and not too much heart. Indeed. But we do need that balance and we do need both. Yeah, we do. We do. And um, just to do a little bit of pushing um, on that, if you like to do the alchemical composting, you really, really will. That will help you so much with getting your balance right. Yes. And we warn you right off. I'm going to do this for a moment now. Right off, every student we've ever had who does this, and including ourselves, because we do it regularly too. Um, you start off with, I, I can't find anything to compost. <laughs> I, I can't see anything. I, I, I don't know. Well, I can't find it. I'm not going to be able to do it properly. <laughs> Because you don't realise that that's part of it. Mm. <laughs> All this sort of whinging and blah, 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 it is a big part of um, right in the bin. <clears throat> but no, seriously, it, it's hard work. They every student has said it's hard work, haven't they? They really it is, and it is hard work. It's still hard work. But it's they all. We've never had one come out of it who's who's done it all. We've never had one say they hadn't changed enormously and really liked the changes. Yes. This is the process of alchemy, is to take the base and produce the noble. Yeah. Um, you can do it with lead and gold if you want, though it's more it's more expensive than anything else. Yes. But to take to take the base matter in your own nature, your own experiences, your own emotions, everything, mm -hmm. and then to compost that, to alchemically change it and bring it out as noble and better and ready to, to become fertile soil and carry on with the next phase of growth is just incredibly invaluable. Yeah. And it, it helps you in, it helps you really get on with everyday life. Yes. Including like, you know, finding your way through this damn virus stuff and, you know, Boris's yeah. decisions to whether or not we should be in lockdown or whether or not we should be doing this and la 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 and all this sort of thing. And, um, it, it really does help. It helps you, you know, with your relationship with your boss at work. Um, it helps you when your bloody husband or your bloody wife will not get their bloody act together. Um, <laughs> haven't we all been there? Yes. Um, because it takes you to a place. There's a, there's a lovely old adage, which is probably Chinese, but I don't know. Um, it says, you cannot change anything but yourself. Mm. But in changing yourself, you see the world change around you. Yes. Now your composting process changes you. Yes. And therefore, you see the world change around you. You see it differently. And the world sees you differently. And your relationships with everything else are different. This, this ties back into concepts like be the change you want to see. Yeah. 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 It, you have to do it. And when you're doing it, you will also get into a real realization of what the earth is doing in the earth's sun and what the sun is doing with you. 
and you get into this like what is it actually doing with me and as well gradually as you start taking your focus completely off yourself this is this you know selfies are all very well but no um and this is a bit of a self you know this kind of work can be a real selfie for people yes. um so when you take your mind off you a little bit you start realizing i'm actually affecting the earth and sun too mm. So the changes that you're allowing in just that simple little exercise are changing how you view the world and how the world is able to react with you. Yes. And, um, and on, a, on a slightly related note there, hmm. the earth and the sun actually talk to each other. I remember reading years ago now, I forget where, but an astronomer had, or an astrophysicist perhaps, had put out a paper demonstrating that the Earth and the Sun exchange charged particles yes. every eight minutes. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you sit in that little space between the two. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look on YouTube and um, I'll try and put up some of the pictures because there's some good physics pictures um, um, not animation. Well, there's animations as well, but there's the, the artist's impression of what is actually happening with yes. the magnetic fields and the, and these are the charged particles that are yes. moving yes. Um, and things like that's what solar wind is um, and how they work together yes and they do and the the funniest thing is that they also seem to work in a figure of eight yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you sort of sit there going Right, you know, all these sort of ancient, ancient, ancient tales and songs and lore yeah, and stories. Have been doing this for four and a half billion years. Exactly. And actually, in some ways, in some ways, you sort of go, well, humans are rather slow. It took us quite a few millions of years to catch on to that. Well, I don't know whether it did. Because well, um, I was just about to say, I don't know whether it did, but we certainly lost it at some point. Well, because whenever we, I've mentioned this to animals, they've just sort of looked at me, yes. Yes, and? News how? <laughs> and and <laughs> what, what's your problem? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they do look at you as those, oh, God, is another bloody thicko. And, um, yeah, okay, uh, they will take us slowly. <laughs> it's a human. <laughs> They're sort of used to us. It's like, yeah, it's a human. They're thick. Okay, fine. And um, they even seem to tell their, their, their babies this, you know, their mm. kittens or their foals or whatever they, they tell them. Um, but they, they, when we got to my field, your field, my yeah. cow, your cow, um, when we got, I want lots of grain because I really like lots of grain because it tastes really nice. Actually, grain is addictive, but let's not go there. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to cut all these trees down to suit me. Yes. Now I was, I was, this is a slight detour. I was actually listening to the radio yesterday and in the, in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia and Papua, mm -hmm. they have, the governments there have given logging concessions to the oil palm companies. The oil palm companies have then bought land off the tribes logged it and planted oil plantations yeah and the elders of those tribes are now saying we shouldn't have done that we can't eat money and where will our ancestors live now we don't have forests yeah and you think that is exactly the mistake our ancestors made thousands of years ago yeah it's not that it's wrong to grow things and pick things and be part of the land but you don't do it outside of asking the land how to do it and we lost that when we started to get selfish and feel ourselves to be superior yes which is which is alas where most of us still are yes and it got worse and worse and worse. I mean, at the very beginning, um, with um, when the Mesolithic started to change a little bit, but it's really the Neolithics who, who got into farming. And not all of them very quickly either. Um, oh. And where I used to live, there's superb archaeological digs, which Fiona's 
let's see. Oh, oh excuse me. And um, so I was asking the archaeologist, they sort of like, when did these guys get into farming? Because we were very far over on the borders of Wales, as I am now, and you're just further south. And they sort of said, well, as far as we can tell from the dig, because they, their dig had actually gone back, they think they'd found a little bit of Mesolithic in the bottom. Yes. Um, so it had really gone back. As far as we can tell, these this lot, or the people here, didn't really get into farming until 4,000 years ago, which is very late. It's very late, considering, for those who don't know, the, the boundary between the Middle Stone Age, the Mesolithic, mm -hmm. and the New Stone Age, the Neolithic, is that when people settled down and started farming, you have pottery and you have farming. And before that, you don't have pottery and you don't have farming, so people were hunting hunter-gatherers. And that happened first off in the Middle East, the, the Near East, in, in what's called the Fertile Crescent in what's now sort of... Turkey? Egypt, Arabia, and into, into sort of Northern Turkey. Yeah. And that happened around 10,000 years ago. And then it spread from there. Mm. But it, there were good reasons for it spreading. In there the, were. And, um, but you it's, can have bigger families and you, you, your food is more assured because you don't have to go out and wonder where things are Except, of course, that it isn't. As except it, it, does mean, it does mean that your, your diet is poorer. Mm -hmm. You don't get the same sort of exercise requirements. Arthritis first turns up when people yep. are under grain. Yep. Because people are on their knees shoving the stone backwards and forwards. Yep. And they get arthritis in their knees and they get arthritis in their shoulders. You don't see arthritis in the same extent in hunter-gatherers. Very, in fact, very rarely, and usually oh, as a result of injury. Very old people. Yeah, very old That's people or injured. If, you, if you've really sort of, you know, you know, yes. this sort of bison nearly took your hip off or something. Yes, you see it then. Everything's a bit wonky, and it never. When, really you, when you back. when you come into the Neolithic, you're seeing it in, you know, twenty five year old women. Yeah, yeah, and also, they as they found, and they, they started finding this out, and I think it was 1962 or 67 or something, the Chicago conference, um, that people used to say, oh, it was nasty, brutish and short, which is a misquote of somebody else completely. But anyway, um, their lives were not short. No. There were 60, 70, 80 year old bones in the yes. Paleolithic, human bones. Yeah. Um, that natural human lifespan. That shrunk, you, shrunk, shrunk. When you move into the Neolithic, yeah. people are having more children. Yeah. They're losing more children. Yeah. The child mortality rate shoots up. Mm. Their, 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 their stature dropped. I mean, the, the average yeah. Roman soldier was only five foot four. Yeah. Well, I'm five foot two. Yeah. Yeah. So the average Roman soldier was only two inches taller than me. Yeah. For, for these days, that would be an exceedingly short chap. Yep, indeed. And we we lost we lost this, and we also decided, of course, that we needed more children because we needed more slaves to do the work. Yes, and also um, more people dying. And more, more children. children, and so it goes up and up and up and up and up. Yes. Instead of the fact that we used to be very well regulated, and population didn't change very much, yes. really, until say ten thousand years ago. Yes, um, and we fitted in. With everything. They, were, they reckon now there were perhaps a million people in the whole planet yeah until 10,000 years ago yeah yeah and then it started climbing yeah and it's it's become exponential then totally well, well, life, really, well certainly in my life a life hmm. cycle we now have um over three and a half times as many people on the planet as we had when I was born yes and that is sort of like oh my god it's the sort um, of reproduction rate you see in a petri dish with bacteria. You don't see it in any species in the wild in its, in its natural ecosystem at all, because predators keep it down. Yeah, and they all balance it together. Of course, we don't have any predators um, now. Um, and, um, and we haven't got the um, common sense and intelligence to look after ourselves, which we could have, but we don't. Um, 
Yes. And, and this again, I'm going back to the heart. Our emotional thing says, oh, but you're not a complete woman if you haven't had a child. And you're not a proper man if you haven't fathered a child. You know, and you sort of go, when will we stop at one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we all stopped at one, that would be fine. Um, well, it wouldn't anymore, would it? Because <laughs> there's too many of us. But, but yes, the idea, the idea. And, and the other thing is, I mean, we we have become very much, we, we now think, well, it's not me, it's my hormones that are making mm. me want a child. And I, I'm not arguing that hormones do, they do. But that is part of the difference in the lifestyle that we have, it's part of the difference in the diet, even, mm. because that changes how your hormones work. And if your hormones don't, I'm, I'm one of these funny people whose hormones don't work like that. Um, my aunts used to give me dolls, at least some of the aunts did. And, and dad used to say, don't do that, don't. And they said, why? She said, well, she uses them for dissection, and um, <laughs> which I did. And uh, <laughs> partly because I wanted to know, they went, wah. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, give, give her give her some some food for her pet rabbit, or give her a, a, a teddy bear, or something like she'll love it. Um, which they eventually some people got the hang of. Um, but I've never had these sort of hormones, so um, I I know they're there, but I haven't actually experienced the longing. Although I know it, I mm. do know it, and I remember it from other lives. But we've got to a state where that longing. We're, we now think we're supposed to have it. And this again is a case of balancing heart and head. Yeah. yeah. We are thinking creatures. That is how we've evolved. We should use it constructively. And we are, we do need to go right back to your very first words. The thinking bits get in the way of the doing bits. Mm. And so we mustn't let them rule. And because one's hormones are going flat out, perhaps it's a good idea to learn about what, what dietary means makes this happen, and what lifestyle things make this happen, and think about, do I actually want this? You know, or don't I, kind of thing. And to actually choose, but for many people it's sort of like, oh, I can't choose because it's, it's natural, it's normal. And it isn't. No other animal is ruled in the same way. Not even rabbits. Well, I was just thinking about Poppy's behaviour towards George when she's in season. Which is, frankly... Disgusting. Lewd. Well, she goes beyond flirtatious, let's put it that way. Oh, yes. Oh, the yeah. poor George being a gelding hasn't the faintest idea what to do and stands around looking <laughs> confused. But, but again, she's not in her normal environment. No, she's not in a herd with a load of other mares. No. And she's not in a herd with a load of young um, fillies and colts as well. And, and, and the, the, the herd study in it. Yes, horses do generally have a, a foal every year. Yeah. Yeah. But they also have predators. Yeah. 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 And not all the foals make it. No. In the wild. No. And if it's a hard winter and she was a bit late foaling, the foal will die. Well, most certainly. I mean, well, you, you see this naturally with deer, yeah. especially up your way. Yeah. You know, if one's been a bit late with, with her calf. Um, and in fact, we're, we're so overpopulated with, with red deer on the hills of Scotland. Well, we, desperately need, people, they also. we desperately need wolves because it, it's, ruining, it's ruining the landscape and it's oh, ruining the deer. Wolves and lynx. Yeah. 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 Well, the lynx would do the little ones. A lynx won't do a red deer, though. <laughs> they won't do a red deer. But they will take the red deer, roe deer down. And we have. Oh, they will. Yeah. Um, and well. they probably manage the fallow. We don't have many fallow up here. Ah, no. Okay. But they'd certainly take a roe. That's not a problem. Yes. And, um, but we still have golden eagles, and golden eagles will take a red deer car. Yes, they will. Yeah. Yeah. Not a very big one, but they will take it. Mm. And, um, and we need to get this sort of balance back. I mean, George Monbiot's film, um, I'm not a big Monbiot fan, but his commentary on, you know, how do wolves change rivers? 
um, or how wolves change rivers is so good that it shows you that once you put the full arc of how nature should be back into a land, everything. Everything, everything changes. The biodiversity yeah. shoots up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the trees are able to grow. Um, the deer stop being so pushy and getting in it everywhere. Um, even the other predators like the bears get on. Yeah. Um, the foxes do well. You see it to some extent in Africa. Yeah. Where, where there is still a proper savanna ecosystem. Which is not very many places now. There are very many places now. Yeah. But where the elephants will keep the trees down. So they like eating trees, but not too many trees because they also like grass. Yeah. So they push over your trees when they're ready. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you get the herds, vast herds of wildebeest that, that just move after the rains, mowing off the young grass. Yeah. Of course, anyone who's had a lawn and mown it knows if you cut grass and leave it, it grows back thicker. Mm, yeah. And that's what these herds do. They eat, they move. Yeah. By the time they come back, the grass is back again. Yeah. Yeah. It's and what it we can't do with our animals because we've got fences. Yeah. So my horses only have six acres. They don't have 100 square miles. Yeah. I was thinking then about, um, I've, forgotten the, I've forgotten the woman's name, the, um, the, the posh couple who've got a castle in Sussex, Wilding. Yes. And they've done it with yes. their place. And they are finding that it so works. And they're yes. even able, <clears throat> not massively, um, but they're even able to take very good beef from it as well. Mm. Um, so, you know, the whole thing is working for them, which is very yes. good. Um, <clears throat> actually, the farmer where I live, um, I st we, st we stopped in the lane for a chat the other couple of weeks or so ago. And he was saying, oh, have you read this book, Wilding? Which of course I have. And I went, Yeah, are you enjoying it? He said, Yes, it's brilliant. <laughs> so I'm there sort of going, please, please, you know, do it. They are doing, they do do some things. I mean, um, we, we need to we need to do this more. We really yeah. do. Yeah. And we need to decide that it's perfectly okay, which is why I disagree with Mombia, that yes. it's perfectly okay for there to be one hell of a lot less of us. Yes. And that if people die, it isn't the end of the world. But then we're back again to where we started. We are. We're back to where we started. Why are you afraid of dying? Because it's the end. Yes. And it isn't. But until we, as an entire species, come to accept that and believe it, know it. As we're used to. It's very difficult. Yeah. It may, it may or it may not happen, but anyway. Guys, it's not the end. When your physical body gives up, it really isn't. And um, yeah, okay, I'm getting a bit of a nudge that we're gonna have to start working up some exercises for that. But, but they won't actually probably appear until the new year, until after we've got, afternoon. We've both got a lot on our plates with new courses at the moment. Just a bit. I'm, I'm afraid reincarnation exercises are gonna to have to go on the end of the list. <laughs> well, <clears throat> certainly moving down that way, unless either of us suddenly get the sort of whoop. As because um, what one thing they do is, you know, when you sort of um, I can't remember what you call it, you shrink a file right down so that it's small, and you can you can send it as one little blast yes. on the computer. Well, they do that to you every now and again. You suddenly find you've got this something great file in your head. You go, well, oh, what? What am I supposed to do? All right, okay. <laughs> But yes, we've got an awful lot to do, but it's something that's going to be coming. Um, but in the meantime, please do not attempt to plug the sun in where the sun don't shine. Yes. And hopefully we have explained that um, this will, A, pull your plug, your grounding plug out of the earth, uh, which will sort of end your incarnation sharpish like. And uh, B, it will put the sun energy in there. So not only do you end your incarnation, but you shoot yourself off very, very fast. <laughs> and getting back is a bit sort of like, oh, bother, I didn't mean to do that. Yes. On that note. I, On think, that I, note, I think we're there. Oh, we'll see you. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>